time. Welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexter Peltzer. Amen. Blessing. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. And before we start, I want to wish you a wonderful holiday. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. May you enjoy your family. May you bless and thank God for all of his blessings. I thank him for our salvation, for the Holy Spirit, for Jesus, for our churches, for our families, and for all the blessings he's bestowed upon us, Dexter. Amen? Amen. Amen. What a blessing, you know, and it is amazing how blessed we are and we don't realize it. Amen? Amen. Why well, it and, says give thanks in all things. Yeah. Amen. And um, today's program is a very technical program in some ways because it has to do with the covenant, you know, and um, the covenant of the blood, okay, and the blood of Jesus, okay, because in the Testament, in the New Testament, in Hebrews 9.15 says that Jesus was the mediator of the new covenant, Dexter. Mm -hmm. And he said that the cup of the new covenant was his blood in 1 Corinthians 11.25. Mm -hmm. And he says that the blood of the, is the blood of the everlasting covenant. So I want to tell, define for them what covenant is. A covenant is a contract, an agreement, a guarantee, a pledge, a promise, a legal binding contract. And, and it says, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you. Wow. So before we begin, it is going to be a powerful teaching. I want you to call your friends. And get a piece of paper and a pencil so you can start writing and you can be blessed. And I'm going to ask Brother Dexter to pray for the teaching and get started. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to say before we even um, yes. pray, this was so important that Jesus actually preached on this, how he's the bread of the life and that he must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And it's so important that we receive and understand that because... Of all the hundreds of disciples that were following him, only 12 were left after he said that. All the others left, and they stopped following Jesus. They walked away from eternal life. So it's really important when Jesus spoke of this that we understand what he's speaking of. Because on one side were those who had eternal life, and on the other were those who rejected that, the covenant in his blood, and what that meant, and walked away. And so it is very important, this teaching that Jesus and Paul and others taught, as well as Peter and others taught, oh, and John, lots of them taught about this covenant. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, seriously, Lord, we need to know your word and we need to live it. And you are the bread of life. And so we come to you today, Jesus. We come to you, Lord, for the truth. So open our eyes to see the truth, our ears to hear it, and our hearts to receive it. And write it on our hearts, as you say in the new covenant, and on our minds in the name of Jesus. We choose to walk in obedience to your word and what you teach us. We choose to have this engrafted on our hearts so that we live it in the new covenant. And we abide in it in the new covenant in the name of Jesus. Yes. You were, Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Well, it's just, I mean... Man, when, when the Lord gives us words of life, we're not to just say, oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, okay, I got it. No, no, we're to walk in it and live it and engraft it onto our hearts. This is really important. We're to establish that covenant in our own hearts. If we don't, we can fall away like all those hundreds of disciples that fell away. These things need to be covenantially established in our hearts. That's why we always... Being Jewish, we always speak about activating what is taught through covenantial prayers back to the Father of obedience to him, and then activating him to help us through the Holy Spirit to walk in that. That's why we do that. Everything we do is in covenantial language because we yes. worship and believe in a covenantial God. Yes. So um, let's start with Leviticus 17.11. Since we're going to talk about the covenant in the blood, it's important that we know that life is in the blood. This is really a foundational scripture here. It says Leviticus 17, 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood that I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So we know right away 
that that's why it's the blood of the lamb that makes atonement or provides for the remission of our sins. So they're washed as far as the east is from the west. And why? Because God said it. He made our life, the foundation of it, in our blood. That's the way he created all living creatures, and especially us as humans who are made in his, our, his image, that life is in the blood. So we know right away the blood is really important, both in the Old Testament and, as we're going to find, critically important in the New Covenant in the New Testament, the New Covenant in his blood, Jesus Christ. So now let's turn to Hebrews 9.22. And Marisol read a couple of these scriptures, how the covenant, the new covenant, is in the blood of the Lamb. So we want this established, though, in our hearts, and then we want to establish what this actually means. Hebrews 9.22. According to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So, so first we're speaking. Sticking in the Old Covenant, although we're reading Hebrews in the New Covenant. So the, the writer of Hebrews is explaining, and by the way, if you want to understand the, pow, the blood and the blood covenant, read the book of Hebrews. It is explained more completely than any other book in the entire Bible. Oh my goodness. Hebrews 8, 8 is all about the covenant. Hebrews 9 is all about the covenant in the blood. Hebrews 10 is all about the covenant in the blood. So read that chapter, those chapters, and read the entire book. So... We know there's no remission of sins, which we need to appear before a holy God and live forever in eternity with him. We need our sins remitted, the forgiveness of our sins, without the shedding of blood. Now, let's continue in the Old Testament. So we have a foundation here. Turn to Exodus 29.20. I'm just going to give you a thought that is pervasive in the scriptures and then let that sink in as we read this. We are not only cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. That means we're washed clean and we're white as snow in the Father's eyes when we believe in Jesus Christ. Our sins are actually forgiven and remitted. We're washed clean. That's being cleansed. But we're also sanctified by the blood. So consecrated. Yes, and sanctified, sanctified means consecrated or set apart for God. We're marked for God. The Savior's blood, I believe, actually flows when we receive it. We drink of his blood. Remember, we're going to get to that scripture. We must eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, that it actually flows through us. Amen. And that's part of why we have divine health. We'll even see that. After the Israelites partook, of the Passover lamb, it says in Psalm 105, 37, that not one of them was sick as they went into the wilderness, not one. When they crossed the river and they went, not one was feeble. And they had just partaken of the Passover lamb, which, of course, Jesus is our eternal Passover lamb. So when they partook of that blood, it coursed through them. They had divine health. There are so many things we need to understand about the covenant in the blood. If you read Isaiah 53, understanding the covenant of blood, you'll understand why we can have divine health and healing, supernatural healing. You understand the fullness of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross and by the shedding of his blood. We will understand this. This is it's, why we're teaching it. It says, by his stripes we were healed. Yes. And there were 39 stripes and... and I remember tremendous Bible amount school, of blood shed in that. In yes. Bible school, they told me that there's 39 main um, diseases that all diseases come from. And so he did a complete work. <clears throat> so I, the covenant is blood. When we receive that into our souls and our spirits and we live it, we will find we are incredibly blessed. Okay, so cleansed and sanctified. So sanctified means by the blood, we are actually being made into the image of Christ. We're being sanctified. We're being made holy. We're set apart for the Lord. We're marked for the Lord. And I'm telling you, there are things that happen in the supernatural world where the demonic realm will know those who were marked for the Lord, who carry the blood of the Lord into their veins and their arteries. Because we must eat and drink of his blood, there are things that this does to mark us. Now, 
But let's keep going so we see all this. Exodus 29, 20. Yeah, this is really cool. So now you're understanding how the Lord uses blood to set us apart and mark us unto him. We are his. This is marking us unto him. And all will know it, the demonic realm and the kingdom of God. By the way, that's why the Passover lamb was, the blood of the lamb was put on the lintels on the doorposts so that when the angel of death came, he did not touch the houses of the Israelites as long as they had the blood of the lamb. They were not touched. Again, they were marked as unto God and not to be harmed. So protection comes from the blood. All right. <laughs> Exodus 29, 20. Then you shall kill the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tip of the right ear of his sons. Hmm. And on the thumb of the right hand, on the big toe of the right foot, and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar. Wow. <clears throat> so, Marisol, what are we seeing right here? Well, and let me keep reading. And you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and on his garments, on his sons and on the garments of his sons with him. And he and his garments shall be hallowed, sanctified, set apart for the Lord, and his sons and his sons' garments also with him. Wow. This is the same as the New Testament we're going to see in a moment. <laughs> How the three bear witness, the spirit, the blood, and the water. You're, you're, going, to, you're going to get this. <laughs> right now, to be sanctified and set apart as priests unto the Lord, Really important you understand this. The blood was only applied to the priests. It was not applied to the Levites. The Levites were cleansed with the water in a ritual bath, but they were never, the blood was never applied to them because they did not minister unto the Lord as the priests did. And we are all Marisol. What are we unto the Lord? Priests, priests. I want to say something. I want to say yes, something. you're going to get this. I got yes. it. I got it. I got it. Can I say it? Yes. All believers are spiritual priest to offer spiritual sacrifices in the new covenant. Thank you. That's Hebrews chapter 9 or 10, right around there. Yeah, we offer spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord. And that's why he says to offer As priests. Us, that's why Romans 8, to live a, a sacrificial life unto yeah. the Lord. I just got it. Yeah, and Romans 12. Romans wow. 12, 1 and 2, actually, right? That were sacrificial so life we unto live the our Lord. Lives, <laughs> we hear from the Holy Spirit. We walk in now the Now you're talking about where the blood went on the uh, ear. We, 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 we hear from hear the, the Holy word of the Spirit, Lord. Holy Spirit. On the thumb, which means authority. We have authority so we and can And on your take feet, so you walk in His path. Per path and His perfect will. And the anointing oil, the Holy Spirit guiding her us because only those that are guided are the true sons of daughters of God. Only those right. that are guided by the Holy Spirit. Right, that's what Jesus said when he talked about the new covenant in his blood. I, my words are spirit and life. Romans John 8, 6, 63. Well, that's John 6, 6, 6 63. But the ones about the, the, the ones that are the true daughters and sons, sons and daughters, Romans, Romans 8, 8 14. 14. Right, through 16 is great to read about that, yes. And because those are the people that walk in the Lord's authority, <laughs> those are the people that hear his voice, right. and those are the people that walk in his power with miracle signs and wonder, the fruits yes. of the Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit. And where we're going, I'm going to jump ahead. I'm Ooh. sorry, there are so many revelations in this. Please stay with us. But Marisol had a dream where the Lord showed her Family heritage is a family trees with all our descendants. And, it was a, and he spoke of the covenant of the, in our heritage of the, our blood and the blood that runs through our veins and our arteries. And you have to understand, it's a covenant in the blood. It's a covenant in his blood, but it's also defined as a covenant in the blood. And we eat of his flesh and drink of his blood when we abide in him. The covenant flows through us, and it flows through us through his blood. And there are so many revelations here. And it is not only to touch us. Under Acts 16.31, <laughs> as you have believed, Marisol, you and your House. whole household House. will be saved. This is a covenant 
that we are to abide in and teach to our children. That's why the Lord says always teach the words of life to our children day and night. Teach it, teach it, teach it. Keep the covenant going. Don't allow it to break. The covenant is for family lines. It is not for an individual. If you don't believe that, just look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> look at David and how the kingly throne went through him all the way to the father of Jesus and the mother of Jesus. All the way, 40 generations, folks. And then another 40 generations. That's 80 generations of called family line to an appointed calling to the Messiah. This is how God operates. So when you understand the covenant and the blood, just stay with us. There's so many more scriptures. It's going to be revelation upon revelation to transform us. All right. I love this. Okay. <laughs> so now we just saw the blood and the anointing working together to sanctify us and set us apart and mark us as sanctified and set apart for the Lord. In the spiritual realm, we are now marked. That blood is seen in the spiritual realm. Now, let's go to um, Leviticus 14.14. 14. Again, I, just, I want you to get this revelation from the Old Testament. And there are so many scriptures in the New Testament. And thank you, Lord, for the dream you gave Marisol. Thank you, Lord, that this is important to you. So we just declare you this is to important tell to him us. What the dream was? Well, I just did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that you saw the charts of the family heritage, and the Lord said it's a covenant in our blood, in our veins, in our arteries. It's it's in our blood. And people were in the in the in the position of delivering. Oh they, yeah, giving they birth. Have, they were giving birth. So we're made to give birth to produce, to be fruitful. To be fruitful for the King of Kings and Lord of for Lords. For the kingdom, for kingdom purposes. Yeah, and, and this is really important. It gives incredible revelation, so I'm just gonna stick on that for a second. Your blood is oxygenated. When you breathe in, right? You breathe in oxygen, right? Your heart pumps, right? And blood then goes, red blood comes out of your heart through your arteries, all throughout your body, right? We know that. That's oxygenated blood, right? What happens after it puts all that blood in your organs and your brain everywhere, right? It depletes the oxygen and now it becomes blue and it comes back to the heart through the veins. Right. And the Lord was showing both, it's important that we continually come, abide in Christ continuously. This is really important for us and our generations that we abide in the Lord, and when we do, that blood is, uh, is filled with living waters that flows courses through us, or living blood. The blood is alive when it is red, and it must come back from the Father's heart, from the Father's will, as we abide and follow him, it comes through our system, and Everything is alive in us. And Dexter, the blood comes through the biggest vein that is in the human body, which is the vena cava that goes into. It is the biggest vein in your body, and it goes into your heart, mm -hmm. which was directly. amazing. Directly. So it was like right. amazing. It's like we need him desperately. His sustenance, always, yes. all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Leviticus 14.14. 14. You're going to like this. Again, this is really quite remarkable because I want you to understand we're all sinners. So I want you to understand this is for trespass offerings for someone who sins, okay? I think we all need to understand what happens, though. Listen to what happens in the Old Covenant. And you'll see the, the parallel with the New. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering. So this is someone that has to kill a lamb when he has a trespass offering. So take some of the blood of the trespass offering. The priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed. Ah, remember? Cleansed and sanctified. On the thumb of his right hand, on the big toe of his right foot. Oh, there it is again. Huh. Wow. So let me get this straight. The blood is applied to the priest, but not to the Levites. But here, under the trespass offering, because there is a need for the remission of sins, that right now, this person is being cleansed by the blood. Huh. Well, this is interesting. 
And it says, and the priest shall take some of the log of oil. Huh, here it is, now the anointing oil. And pour it into the palm of his own left hand. Then the priest shall dip his right hand finger in the oil that it is in his left hand and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And of the rest of the oil in his hand, the priest shall put some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed. Oh, wait, wait. So first there's the blood and now there's the anointing oil, Mary. So are you hearing this? Uh -huh. On the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot over the blood of the trespass off. And seven times, and what did Jesus say in the New Testament? How many times are we to forgive when um, one of the... Seven times seven. Seven times seven. So again, it's a, it's a depiction of forgiveness. Which is infinite. Infinite. Which again, when we abide in Christ, we can forgive others infinitely. Without that in the flesh, we have no chance of doing that. And then he says, the rest of the anointing oil that is in the priest's hand shall be put on the head of him who is to be cleansed. So the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord. <clears throat> wow. So the anointing and the blood are working together. It's no different in the new covenant. You will see this. Okay. Now, huh, now that we understand this a little bit more, oh, there's the spirit. He just fell on me. Let's turn to 1 John 5, 7. It figures, because this is where the spirit bears witness. <laughs> It figures that's when the spirit falls on me. Yep. First John five seven. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna read verse six because this is just an amazing scripture. This is John's the beloved John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, talking about his beloved Jesus. Wow, he says, This is he being Jesus, who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. Huh. What did we just hear about? The oil and the blood. And what do we, okay, so now it's the water and the blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is true. So who's bearing witness to this? The Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. They're always in agreement. They're always one. One God, three persons, mystery. Accept it, believe it. There's incredible evidence for that. If you ever question it, look it up. <clears throat> and there are three that bear witness on the earth. So here we are, we're on the earth, right Marisol? Yeah. The Holy Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. Now, <clears throat> So the spirit, the anointing, the water, water baptism, right? Bear witness to our salvation because we confess our faith before others unto the Lord and by the blood. And what did Jesus say about the Lord's Supper, Marisol? We're to partake of that in remembrance of, of him. As, of right? Him. Of him. It's the atonement for our sin. Right. He paid so the full price. His body, which he gave for us, of yeah. course, on the cross and through the 39 stripes, and the new covenant in his blood shed for the remission of for your sins. sins. And in 1 Corinthians 11, 25, the cup of the new covenant is my blood. Yeah. Wow. So, three bear witness, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And by the way, we're going to see in a moment what they bear witness to also to us in that we're saved. Ha! Huh. Isn't that beautiful? God just doesn't leave us like, I hope I'm saved. I wish I was saved. I wish I knew. No. They bear witness even to us on this earth. <clears throat> Romans they're 8, 16. in unity, Dexter. Yeah, they're in, in unity. That's why I said earlier, you, you said Romans 8, 14, that those who are led by the Spirit are the true sons and daughters of God. Let's read Romans 8, 16. You're going to love this. Hmm. <laughs> it's great. It, it, right before this, it says, We've received the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Abba Father, Daddy, Father, which the little Jewish boys and girls would cry out to their daddy. Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So the blood, the water, and the spirit, they're all bearing witness. And here the spirit, the Holy Spirit, bears witness to us that we are saved and children of God. This is really important because I had no witness as a prodigal son when I came back. And I asked for this witness and it has filled me ever since. I have had nothing but his peace and joy. This is, this is again, my people perish for lack of understanding and the accuser of the brethren can destroy us because we don't understand the truth. We are to have that witness inside of us. The Holy Spirit bearing witness with our witness and we are to know it as we know our own name. That we are truly saved and sons and daughters of God. This is all, every one of these scriptures are so important that we have the fullness of it in our hearts, in our souls, and in our spirits. Because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness right now to your spirit that you are a true son or daughter of God. I ask you to fill everyone with this knowledge and this revelation, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bear witness to each one of us in Jesus' name. And you know, Dexter, it says that my sheep hear my voice. Because when we're his children, he opens our ears to hear what he's saying. Yeah, just like the anointing and the blood both went on the ear. We have to hear. My sheep hear his voice. That's why even in, in Revelation chapter 3, it says, Anoint your eyes with eyes solved so you can see the truth. That you are blind and naked and living in the world. Oh, per purchase the true gifts anoint your eyes with eye sauce so that you see father anoint our ears with ear yes. solve the anointing yes and the blood of the lamb open up our ears to hear the truth and only your truth father in jesus name amen you know one of the greatest moments in my personal life where god just helped me to make a turn and and walk in his will was when I was praying for something. And I kept praying and I kept praying and I kept praying and he didn't answer. So I said, Lord, why aren't you answering? And basically it was, I was talking too much and I wasn't being quiet before him and let him speak to me. We have to have that time where he speaks to us, that he, we need to train ourselves to hear his voice and he speaks to us in our prayer closet. And he speaks through us through the word of God. But sometimes we talk too much. And I always, I talk a lot. Right, Dexter? So I have to remind myself, <laughs> how many ears do you have, Marisol? You have two. And you only have <laughs> one mouth. So you need to be quiet. And you need to hear more. <laughs> and you know that I remind myself of that with the Lord. I have to listen more and be quiet. I know. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to share something in, in humility um, that Marisol and I were praying uh, the Saturday before the election for our president and um, we were praying and um, you know it, it says in Job if you decree a thing you know it will be established by God basically it says so you know it's the word of faith right De declare and decree what you believe God's will is and he'll establish it right yeah. well there was a problem with that, and, and so the Lord really taught us, it, I'm telling you, we're in the middle of decreeing like states that would vote for the Lord, like, you know, all right, New York has never voted for a Republican, you're going to vote for Trump, you know, and we're just like, we're declaring and decreeing, and all of a sudden, like a boom came into the room, and Marisol knows this, and we just heard stop, and it was like, what? Okay, so we had to reverse those decrees, and then we listened. It was just, it was remarkable, I have to say. You had to be quiet. <laughs> And the spirits on me. It was so beautiful. All of a sudden, four states came into us, which is Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Ohio, and Florida. And the Lord said, my strategy is those four states will win the presidential election. You decree those. And then he gave us all these decrees, even over witchcraft and other things that were attacking people in the states, and even in the church, how the, the, to lift up the church into the truth. We were, per we were um, anointing the, the church's eyes with eyes solves to ear hear and see the truth and ears. We were doing so much the Lord was leading us to, to break through the lies and deceits of the enemy that were even over the church. And so the church would be voting for God's his will. 
It was amazing. Wave after wave of prayers came and revelations, and they all came, we believe, true. Even those four states, which was a miracle, all voted for God's will. And, you know, I'm just going to be honest because there's some of you that are scratching your head. How can you vote for that man? Well, I'll tell you what, because we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we understand that it was God's will. He finally showed us through the scriptures, through dreams, and when he showed us, this is my will. This is just like Cyrus. This is a man that will break through. He will bust through and he will turn the tide of America heading towards destruction and turn it back to his pillars of justice and righteousness. And I will surround him with godly people. And we saw that with Mike Pence and others. And we've, we've seen it because now in each meeting, Mike Pence is praying before their meetings with the president-elect. There are so many things that he's doing. And we were like, well, but, but Lord, look at this. Look at what he says and does. This isn't Christian-like. This is wrong. And he said, no, this is my choice because I'm, I'm going to put a hammer because right now there's no one in the church that can be a hammer like he can to break through and turn the tide of all this destruction in America and turn it. So what did we do? We came in agreement with his word to us. The point being, we are not to just declare and decree what we think is right. We're supposed to hear from the Lord, see what he's doing in heaven, hear from him, and then align in his will to that and declare and decree that back to him in prayer. That's how he functions, and that's how we're to function with him. You know, I kept switching who I wanted. <laughs> I started with one guy, went to another one, another one, another one, another yeah, one. Yeah, at one point one. it was Rubio, and then, it, yeah, exactly. And, then, and so, and he was not, it's not what I want, it's what God wants, what God establishes, and the Word of God says that he's the one that sets the leaders and the governmental authorities. Amen. That's right. They're all accountable to him, yeah. not to man. Each governmental leader is accountable to God. And it says in a word, he can cause any leader, any king, in their heart to do whatever he desires whenever he wants it. He is God Almighty. Okay. So we pray for our president-elect, amen? And we pray for Obama, and we pray for everybody. Well, we're called in the scriptures to pray yeah. for your leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we obey. Because mm -hmm. God says it, it's important to him, then it's important to us. Amen. Okay. So we read that, 2 Corinthians one twenty two. I just want to make sure you, you also understand that this is really a big deal, because there's many that the devil attacks. The, he's the accuser of the brethren. It says, he who has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a, a guarantee. So God has sealed us and has given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. What? Of your salvation. It needs to be written on your heart that I am saved. This is a guarantee. It's a guarantee in your heart. And we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. And last time I checked, there is nothing below the earth in the earth or above the earth that can break the seal of God that is on us. Huh. That's pretty good. You know, Dexter, I think of Saul of Tarsus. It is amazing when we surrender fully to God. We hear his voice. We are obedient. And he gets a hold of our heart how he changes us. Oh, yeah. And, Sanctifies and, us. And this man, Saul of Tarsus, became Paul, who wrote First Timothy, Second Timothy, Romans, Philippians, Ephesians. I mean, a mighty man of God. And he, he wasn't the best person ever. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, oh, he was putting to death the Christians. Yeah, and he, they took Stephen's clothes, rose, and put him at, at his feet. feet. Yeah. When the Lord gets a hold of you, you change. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so we need to pray for our leaders that the God gets a hold of them, and he, like I like to say, he mops the floor with them, and loves them, and changes them from the inside out, and cleans their hearts. That's why our callings, even Paul's calling, and I believe even to his... Um, to his family, I mean, I, it, it's powerful. It's not to be broken. It, it, we have grave responsibility in our families to be priests unto the Lord and unto our families. This is our calling. It's really important we understand that because it's a covenant in his blood. And so I want to read about the covenant in his blood a little bit more. 
Hebrews 13, 12, it's important we know this. It says, therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. See, Jesus did not die in the city. He died outside the city. He was hung outside the city. And we're to go to him outside the city. It's a remarkable scripture because it talks about the fact that there is no continuing Jerusalem. It's not going to really, Jerusalem will never be really established until the millennium when it will be, <laughs> begin to be the reign of Jesus Christ on this earth for a day or a thousand years. Remember, a thousand years is a day and a day is un, as of a thousand years. So the day of the Lord being a thousand years, Jesus Christ will rule and reign and everything will be put on submission under his feet. And, and know, then he will hand the kingdom back to his father. And you know, that's where I really believe that the Lord chooses specifically some families to accomplish the purposes through their generation. Some families have a governmental authority. Some families are called for certain things, you know? Oh, yeah. And God prepares their, the family line, and that's carried across the family line. Yeah, and that's why it's so important as grandparents, aunts, uncles, parents, we pray over our family line, all of them. Cover them with the blood of the Lamb. Pray over them. Pray Psalm 91 protection over them. Pray over them to be blessed. Pray over them to know the Lord. Pray so many things over them that even if they go wayward, pray 1 John 5, 16 through 18, which says you can even remit their sins before the Father, and the Father will give them life, eternal life. There are so many things you can do over your family that we're to be priests unto the Lord and priests unto our family. It goes both ways. It's so important. We don't lose that revelation. And I'm telling you, if you're not right now, Father, awaken us to be priests unto you and unto our families in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us not take for granted the covenant in the blood that runs through our family line. Let us nurture that with our prayers, our faith, and everything we do, teaching our children, our children's children the word of God, let us be ministers of Amen. the new covenant, ambassadors of it, even to our own family first, Father, in Jesus' name. And some people might ask, is it scriptural to pray for your family in the future? Jesus and the Apostle Paul <laughs> prayed for the church in the future. If he did it, we can do it too. Oh, yeah, and David did over his whole family. Many times he prayed. Amen. And that's taking dominion. That's, that's a kingdom authority that you're using. Pray for the regenerations to come. The classic is Abraham blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob. Jacob became Israel and blessed the 12 tribes as 12 sons, each one of them individually. The blessing was known and the Spirit just fell on me and carried through. And I'm telling you, if you're a father, a grandparent, I'm telling you, you can release words of life. Blessings are words of spirit and life. And they, no word will come out of your mouth that comes from the Father that will not be performed from them. When you bless your children for their future in the Lord, you will find astonishingly every one of the 12 children of Jacob fulfilled what was spoken over them. Remarkable. It's the power of God spoken into their lives. One of the most Touching family traditions in my family is when we used to um, greet our uncles, our grandmother, our father. We used to say bendición, which it was like an asking for a blessing. And the, our elderly member of the family would say, Dios te bendiga, God bless you. It was a beautiful thing. And I think that a lot of the things that I'm reaping in my life was because of the blessings I received from my Uncle Abraham from my your grandmother. Uncle, from remember? my grandmother. Well, you, she used to comb your hair, you she tell me, and she used hair. to pray over you. And she used to comb my hair and pray over when me. When you were a little girl. And speak over me in tongues. Mm -hmm. You know, and the and, and it's it's important. And it's the Well, it's words of life. It's my youngest memory that I can remember as a child. I think I was two. My grandmother blessing me and combing my hair and speaking in tongues over me. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. I'm so blessed. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Grandmas do that. That's a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. New covenant in his blood. So we know this. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 and 25. 
says, when he gave thanks, he broke the bread and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This too, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. See, covenants are fulfilled filled by uh, walking in obedience to what God calls us to do. There are some things like this he just calls us to do and we know to do, and there's others we're led to do, we're led by the Spirit. <laughs> just like you know not to lie, okay? And the Spirit convicts you when you lie. But in the same way, these are things that you're to do. When a neighbor has a need, you're not to walk by and say, let me pray about meeting his need when he's starving or his house just burnt down. Come on, folks, we don't have to pray about that. We know to run to their aid. We know if they need shelter, provide shelter. If they need food, provide food. If they need water, provide water. We're to be just like <laughs> the story of the Good Samaritan. Who is my neighbor? Even my enemy is my neighbor. Remember, the Samaritan was an enemy of the Jewish people. But God used that. And the one person who actually saved the person, a Jew, who fell prey to the robbers was the Samaritan, his hated enemy, was the only one who stopped for him. Love thy neighbor as thyself. These are things that we know to do. And when we have the heart of God and the spirit flowing through a spirit in life, then we know to do these things. Now, new covenant in my blood, Okay. And we know it's a new covenant. So, by the way, some of you who think, well, the old covenant is still there, read Hebrews 12.24, by the way. Because in that scripture, this is really important, when it talks about the new covenant in Hebrews 12.24, it uses an unusual Greek word for new, which is kainos. I want to read what it means. That which is unaccustomed or unused previously. New as to form or quality of a different nature from what is contrasted as of the old. So it really is something brand new. It's contrasted from the old. It's not added on. The new covenant is not added on to the old covenant. It is a new covenant and it is better in every way. That's why in Hebrews it says, and the old covenant is passing away. And by the way, the reason why it doesn't completely pass away is because everyone who's an unbeliever will still be judged by the Torah, by the law. The word says that. Only those who are led by the Spirit are not going to be judged by the law. It says that in Galatians chapter 5. Read it. So when we understand that, we know that none of the law will pass away. But remember, the purpose of the law is to bring us to repentance, to see our sinful nature before a holy God so that we repent. We know we need a Savior and we go run to Jesus with our faith in what he accomplished on the cross. Amen. So it brings us to repentance. That's the purpose of the law. And Dexter, I want to bring out another point. Not only are we partakers of this new covenant, but also the Gentiles become partakers of the Abrahamic covenant yeah. when they partake of Jesus. When they accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, they become drafted. Yeah, grafted they, into the tree. Into the tree, and they mm -hmm. become partakers of the Abrahamic covenant, right. which is another blessing we can and, talk about. And our spiritual sons and daughters, daughters of Israel, race. the true spiritual sons and daughters of Israel. Remember, Paul taught this, and read, <laughs> read Romans 9 through 11, please. He teaches about that, where those who believe in Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ, are the true spiritual sons and daughters of God. The true Jews. And we're all grafted into one tree, so there's no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female. We are all one in Christ. And the, the dividing wall of separation was shattered in Christ. So the Jews and Gentiles, male and female, it doesn't matter. Any two races, we can all be brothers and sisters in love together, only in Christ. That's why we see in Israel right now, there's Palestinians worshiping right now side by side with Jewish people in the Messianic synagogues. It's beautiful. They are loving each other and praying together. It's just, who could have done that? Two societies that have hated each other for the longest time, who could bring them together? Ah, oh, the same one. 
who went and told us the story of the Good Samaritan. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. All right. Now. <clears throat> I'm sorry I did toward you. <laughs> now, there's a lot in this. John 6, 53. Let's talk about the scripture again where most of the disciples other than the 12, and one of them was a devil, Judas, so only 11 stayed with Jesus after this teaching that I am the bread of life and you must come to me. I'm the bread of life. He says it three times. And then he teaches. She says something remarkable. Let's read it in John 6, 53. <laughs> Jesus said to them, all these followers, these are followers. Right now he's not talking about the Pharisees and scribes. He's talking to his followers, the word says. Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh, of the Son of Man, because cannibalism was an abomination unto the Lord, eating the flesh of man. So he's using language here that is really, I'm going to tell you something. This is what Jesus did all the time. You had a religious mindset. He, you had a choice. You could have it shattered, destroyed, broken away, so you would cast it away from you and believed in him, or you kept it. You had no choice. You kept him be. He would shatter it like a hammer, like... President Trump is going to shatter some things. So listen to this. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Oh, so now he's giving us a spiritual significance. The vine, us abiding in the vine. Come on, John. What a beautiful teaching, right? Spirit's on me again. This is spiritual significance, which is incredible. This is why the Lord showed us the covenant in the veins and the arteries, because it, you, you can't just confess Jesus Christ and go run in the world and do your own thing. You must abide in him. Your sustenance in him must be every day. And therefore, your blood is red and full of the sustenance of Christ. It is filled with the blood of the Lamb. And therefore, he says, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As a living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna. Remember the manna that fell in the wilderness for 40 years. And they're all dead. <laughs> He who eats this bread will live forever. Now, the disciples, all of them, except for the 12, left Jesus after this. And this happened in they Capernaum. They got offended. They were still in Capernaum. They knew him. That was his hometown. Yeah. It's remarkable. That's why, you know, we think, oh, it's not important, the blood covenant. Hmm. I guess, is it not important that we understand that we're to eat his flesh and drink his blood? Is that not important because, or if we're offended by it and we walk away, we're walking away from eternal life. And this is what he said. I am the bread of life. You must partake of me. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, but by me, but in me. That's why we must abide in him. You know, they couldn't receive a great truth and revelation of God because they were, they were more concerned with their traditions and with their religiosity than with knowing and having relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And we need That's to right. understand Jesus that. Jesus actually told them, you don't have life because you refuse to come to me. Yeah. He actually told them that. You see the times and the seasons of the weather and all that, but you cannot see that the Savior, the Mashiach, has come and he is standing before you and giving you the bread of life through his very words from heaven, which only the Father spoke, now he is speaking. So they're blind. They couldn't hear and they couldn't see. We've made the, oh, the circle. They're right. blind. They couldn't make... Anointing the blood coming together. Anoint the ears, anoint the thumb, anoint the feet. So we and the walk. men of Issachar, they were able to discern that it was a time of change, that the Lord was mo moving Saul out of the throne and putting David on the throne. They were able to discern God's perfect will and align themselves 
with God's purposes now and in the future. Okay, Amen. so now I'm going to speak a very important scripture. Yes. That not only did all those disciples depart from Jesus, but many depart, we're going to see in a moment, because of this scripture also, without understanding the importance of it. The blood of the Lamb and the covenant under which we are under, we and how serious it is. We're good, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, there's a threshold covenant in the Middle East, Marisol, right? Mm hmm and we kind of uh, know what this is because in the Middle East, it's been practiced for many, many centuries. Um, in fact, thousands of years, the, blood, the threshold covenant was been, has been there. So if I enter someone's home in the Middle East, there's actually a, a, a carved in and a little basin is in the center and there's blood that's placed there. And the blood is there. And when you step over the blood in the threshold of a person's home, once you step in, you're under their, their protection. They must give their own life for you. In fact, they'd have to give their whole family's life to protect you before you would be harmed. That's why Lot, remember, even what gave up his children before he gave up the angels because the angels crossed his threshold covering. Read about it with Sodom and Gomorrah right before they got destroyed. So he had to give up his own family to protect them when they crossed his threshold. Now, here's the thing. Blood covenants in the Middle East are honored even today, and they are so important. So that, you'll, and you'll understand this in a moment, when two people make a covenant, Marisol, they cut up an animal, okay, mm -hmm. like a ram or something. They cut it up, and they put it on two sides. Mm -hmm. The two of them walk together then in agreement through the broken pieces of the animal and the blood on both sides. And at the end, what they say is, if we do not, either of us do not abide by this covenant, which we have just made between each other, then let our lives be as this animal's dead and broken. It's a curse they speak over themselves and give permission for their lives to be taken if they do not abide by the covenant. God the Father made a unilateral covenant with Abraham where an animal was sacrificed and he, and he walked between it and made the covenant that Abraham would be the father of Israel and from him <laughs> millions and millions would be born. The sons of Israel would be beyond the stars in the sand. You couldn't count them. He made a covenant with him. Now, now you're going to understand this. Now, in the Middle East, if I hate someone, what I do is I stomp on that basin of blood. I don't cross it, I stomp on it. It is the gravest insult in the Middle East. I trample on the blood, I do not cross it. Do you understand? Now I'm going to read a scripture to you. Now you're going to get this. Hebrews 10, 26. Listen carefully, because this is going to get to this verse in like three verses. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for our sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adverse adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now listen to this. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Do you see it? If we come to salvation in Jesus Christ and we don't abide in him and we choose to go back to the world as remember all those disciples did that were following him. They couldn't stand the fact they'd have to eat his flesh and drink his blood so they departed, went back to the world. Remember, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. You know what? If you continue willfully sinning after coming to the knowledge of truth, you are trampling on the blood of the covenant of the Lamb of God, the same as you would be on that threshold. That is insulting the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace. Remember, you're sanctified by the blood and the Spirit. We've seen this over and over again. Now this is coming full circle. 
So when I say, for me, this scripture knocked me on my feet as a prodigal son, and I understand, I understood the blood of the covenant is precious. It is not to be taken lightly. And I'm ending on a very serious note so that this, we would all agree, needs to be written on our hearts that we would obey God and we would be holy and allow him to sanctify us by the blood of the lamb. Remember, we're all sanctified by the blood of the lamb. So I want to pray this, Marisol. Yes. This is really important. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. with the confession of my lips, I have entered the covenant with you. Yes, Lord. Of Jesus Christ being my Lord and Savior. And I've asked you for the remission of my sins by the blood of the yes, Lamb, Father, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name. But now, Lord, I also ask that you write unto my heart, as you promised in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 40, 34, you write on my heart your desires for me and your will and your ways, and you write them on my mind. And Lord, I choose this day to follow you and to abide in you, Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. And Lord, if there is any sinful way in me that is displeasing yes. to you, if I am willfully continuing to sin yes. against you, I don't care if it's pornography, lust, adultery, fornication, yes. whatever it is, Father, I repent of it right now. And I surrender to be sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, as you promised in Hebrews 13, 12. I surrender to you completely to be sanctified by you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I cannot continue in that sin. So I crucify my flesh and its sinful desires, and I choose holiness. I choose to be holy as you are holy. Yes. But I need you, Father, to sanctify yes. me. I need you to make me like Jesus Christ, holy and separated unto you. I choose this. Now I ask you to, yes. with the blood of the Lamb, cleanse my conscience of all that guilt and shame of my past sins. Under Hebrews 9.14 and 10.22. Cleanse my conscience, Lord, so I can now have in my heart a knowing that I am sanctified and holy and saved by you. I ask you to witness this to me, Holy Spirit. Yes. And I ask you now to seal me. Yes. And lead me in the ever way of ever, ever, ever the way everlasting, following in you name. in thy perfect will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, anything hidden from me. Yes. I ask you to anoint my eyes to see the truth, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive, Lord. This is serious. In Jesus and I repent name. forever taking lightly the covenant in the yes, blood in of Jesus the Lamb name. that was given for me. Yes, Father, in Jesus' name. I repent to that, Father, and I ask you now to not only forgive me, but lead me in the way everlasting, holy and sanctified and set apart for you. I surrender completely myself and my entire name. family line to be in sanctified and saved by you under Acts 16, 31. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Wow. I love this teaching, Dexter. We can teach about this more, can't we? Amen. Yeah, there's unfortunately a couple more scriptures. Um, like read Jeremiah 31, 34. By the way, it prophesies of the new covenant, which is then fulfilled the new covenant in his blood. It's remarkable, and there's another scripture, and, and also Ezekiel that does that. Ezekiel so, what, honey? Um, Ezekiel 37, right? Uh, okay, hold on. I'll, I have it marked well in my Bible. Well, while Brother second. Dexter looks for that, I want to yeah, encourage Ezekiel you. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 29. 25 to 29, amen. Yes. I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, go to shalomshalom.org and subscribe to our channel. And um, write to us at, through YouTube or to shalomshalom.org. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to ask you, we answer your questions, and we want to pray for you. This has been a blessing, today's teaching. I want to thank you, Dexter, for such a wonderful teaching. Thank well, you. Thank you, Marisol. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Just thank the Lord for all the wonderful things He's done and for the blood of the covenant and for the atonement of Jesus Christ. That's right. This has been your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer and my beloved husband, Reverend Amen. Dexter Peltzer. We love you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Shalom. Shalom. Bye-bye.